Welcome to today's interview. I brought on Sarah Armstrong. Sarah, welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Heather. I'm really excited to be here. Please give the listeners a little background. Where do you live and what do you do? Sure. So I live in the beautiful state of Indiana um, in the Indianapolis area, and I am a vision and energy transformation architect, which is kind of a lot. But what that basically means is I support my clients to take their ideas and visions and make them reality. And then we break down their energetic profile to make sure that they're in alignment with making it all happen, making all their dreams and realities come to fruition. Well, and we've already been talking for quite a while about many different things. And so we just jumped into the interview, but I guess I want to start this way. Um, If you could give humanity a billboard message, like you're about to leave the planet, you're, you're over this. What is the one thing you want people to know? Oh, wow. That's a really good question. Um, I think for me right now, the one thing that like, if I, you know, were exiting the planet tomorrow, it would be that, that whatever you resonate with God source universe, whatever you call that higher being gave you the idea that you have on your heart for a reason. And it's up to you to step into it and to make it reality. I love that. And I, I think the only word I challenge you on is to make it reality. Cause I think that's where people well, at least in American culture, mm-hmm. it's the push mentality. It's the hustle and grind. It's the masculine energy. It's strategy. You got to make shit happen. You have to have a roadmap and it's exhausting. And so mm-hmm. I've stepped into this whole different space of, I love the word alignment, but co-creating to have ideas and desires, but to allow it to unfold and for it to be shown to you rather than making it happen. Can you explain the difference? Absolutely. I absolutely can. Because here's the thing, um, within the work that I do, I have a piece of my company is called the vision of you and it is vision of you and it's dream align and design your life to become your true self. So inside of that, what ends up happening is, and this kind of goes back to when you have that idea or you have that vision or you have that flash of what, wow, like what if I could do this, right? Like it's not what if, it's you absolutely can and you absolutely must do that thing. You Like you were given that for a reason because only you, only uniquely you can actually live that out, right? And so- With that being said, there is a big difference between the hustle and the grind and the making and the holding on so I'm shaking my fist in the air for those of you that can't see us here on the podcast, holding like your fist so tight and wanting it so bad. Mm -hmm. When you do that, you instantly repel it. Like you don't even give the idea or the vision a chance to grow. So what you need to, what you need to do is align yourself. So it's, you have the dream, you have the vision, you have the idea, then you work into alignment with becoming the person that can, that can handle all of that. And then you start to design it. Then you go out and you get the blueprint and you make it happen. And I say, make it happen because there's still some work involved, right? Like you have to get out and talk to people or build the thing or, you know, create the website or whatever it is like, you know, like you have to do some work in it, but you can't hustle and grind the entire time because I believe that you end up repelling it. Pardon the interruption. If this content is resonating with you, I want to offer you some additional resources. Check out my website, heatherhakes.com and take the free life assessment. This is a great tool to take inventory in life where you're feeling in alignment and abundant and where you're feeling stuck, stressed out, or as someone recently emailed me, completely ruining my life. I've also created a self-study course all about mindset and manifesting. Again, check out my website, heatherhakes.com, and click on course. Finally, if you are ready to deep dive and really transform your life, I offer one-on-one coaching. I will teach you what has taken me years and tens of thousands of dollars to learn in which you can start implementing right now. 
To learn more and schedule your free strategy call, visit heatherhakes.com forward slash coaching. Now back to regular programming. Well, and back to your example, that fist. So I think of it as white knuckling. When you're white knuckling, Mm -hmm. controlling, trying to make something happen, your thoughts and your vibration is actually all about the lack and scarcity that you don't have it. And so it's more of this manic manifesting, trying to make it happen. But I think something else you slightly touched on is, sure, I can't just sit on my couch and Mm -hmm. complete a marathon, right? There's, there's got to be action involved, but there's a difference of being inspired and guided with ahas or ideas. And then the resources just come to you versus oh my gosh, I'm looking for a job. I've got to update my resume. I have to go to all the job boards. I have to No. Mm -hmm. What about if you just had the desire? Literally, I saw someone post about this yesterday in a Facebook group. So 2020, her and her husband lost their jobs. And the husband sat back and he's like, man, my dream would be to be able to work remote for this much money and, and whatever. So he had a couple ideas at long Mm -hmm. fast forward. He ended up getting a job way beyond his vision, better benefits than he's ever had. And it's to work remote. So I think that's the manifesting. And I don't know how it came to him. I don't know, you know, through a friend or connection or whatever, but it's probably not out there looking on all the job boards, feeling flustered and, and trying to apply to a hundred jobs today. Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely not. Because, you know, what, what you tapped on was, um, brings me to the other piece of what I do, which is the energy. Right. And so, so if you think about it, like we're all energetic beings and like energy attracts like energy. So if you are like, in that white knuckling it down the road, like what you're going to attract are situations and events where you have to continue to white knuckle versus if you set the intention and you put it out into the universe and you say like this, like in your example, this gentleman, I want to make this much money working remote, you know, and somewhere in this range of, you know, industry. Yeah then you now have a more clearer picture of where you're going and like how to direct your ship. And then you also have to stay in alignment with that vision. So if he were to say, I would like to work remotely and making this much money, you know, in the tech industry, right? That's one thing. Versus if he were to say, I want to make this much money and I want to work remote um, on a cruise ship, like that's out of alignment. Right. Because so, so it's, it's, it's staying in alignment with what it is that your vision is. Okay. Question. I want to backtrack a little bit. Something you brought up and I a hundred percent believe this, that we all came here with, and people call it different things, soul purpose. Um, and I remember in my twenties and I literally used to Google, what is my purpose? Why am I on earth? Whatever. And I've asked clients too before, because people are in this spot, they're like, well, maybe I want to start a business. Maybe I want to, but I'm not fulfilled in life. And so I ask, well, what lights you up? What brings you joy? What just comes to you easily that you have so much fun with? A lot of people don't have an answer to that. So how do you ask, or how do you know? I think it's just a great question because I think that a lot of people don't have an answer to that because they're overthinking it they're overcomplicating it, right? Because they're like, how could I possibly, you know, make a six figure income by sitting in a coffee shop talking to people? Well, I don't know. How could you, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like, you know, so let's think about that. Let's start, you know, like, let's spitball some ideas. How could you make that type of money? Like sitting in a coffee shop, you know, having conversations, you can figure it out. I'll give a personal example. So for me, since I was a young girl, I was very, well, I was shy, but yet I was super animated at home in my surroundings. And so Mm -hmm. I grew up in the eighties and early nineties. So back then we had these big ass video cameras and I I would be that girl. I'm like, today is Thursday, December 1st, whatever. And I would just go off on this whole tangent and I was talking to my audience and, and then my dad built me a playhouse and I was always the teacher for my brother and 
um, cousins. I always wanted to be at the chalkboard telling them lessons. Anyway, fast forward to college. I wanted, I wanted to be a teacher. And then I found out they made 35,000 a year. And I was like, I don't want to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. So I changed direction, ended up getting a general degree, communications and marketing. And then I got my paralegal and worked in corporate for 10 years, fucking hated it. And then guess what? It's brought me back to this whole teaching in a different realm. Mm -hmm. I'm not teaching K through 12. I'm teaching through podcasting and through coaching. And so again, I couldn't have fathomed that, but that, that desire and love of mine since I was a young girl has stayed with me and just opened up in a completely new direction. I couldn't have imagined. Right. So I guess and something you shared with me is kind of discovering, um, sorry, to be bold and courageous and step into our own light. So what is it that do you love cooking? And, and maybe you have a cooking show or you love writing. Well, freaking publish that book or, you know, what are examples maybe for you and yourself or clients that people are like, oh my gosh, I didn't know I could do that and have gone on to do it. Yeah. I mean, that's such a great question because I, you know, what's really interesting is um, inside of the vision of you, I get to lead vision creation workshops um, and I get to work with my clients one-on-one to develop what is like, what is your vision? You know, like if you could do anything, what would you do? Right. And they have these ideas and they're like, you know, I think so often we talk ourselves out of them because we're like, that's just too good to be true. Like, Mm. you know, we're kind of ingrained to be like, we can only be happy for so long. And then we have to go like, you know, that was fun. Now we've got to go back, you know, back to work or whatever. Um, but with that being said, what I've been able to witness is, is it's just so amazing. Like, because I've been able to see like a woman that came to a workshop that was like, you know, I, I, I have all of this hospitality experience and I would like to open my own, um, event center, right? Like that was what she wanted to do. But shortly thereafter, she realized that was going to be quite a bit of an investment, but that doesn't mean that she's not involved in events. She's now doing event planning and coordination and design on her own. And it's, it's going phenomenally well, right? So it's, it's the thing of, you know, you have the, you have the skill set and the big and the big idea. Um, my my coaching business is idea of you coaching because I love your ideas and I love the idea of you and what you could think of to create. But it doesn't always have to be exactly the way that it came to you, right? It's it's that you know we talked about this earlier as well, Heather. Is it's the I believe God, source, universe, whatever you, whatever you relate to gives you an idea and a vision for a reason, because you're here to carry that out. Now, it doesn't always look like the way that you think it's going to be because the how and the full path aren't revealed to you from day one, right? From that time that you download that idea or that vision, but it's up to you to take that inspired action, to take the first step and to see where do we go? Okay. We took step one. We landed here. Now, what do I do? I take another step and what direction does that put me in? Okay. Now I'm taking another step. It's, it's not leaping. It's just taking those baby steps and knowing and having that trust and faith that you're taking the right action. Well, I think something important to note there is to ask questions. Like I'm now living in a space of I'm asking for guidance and I'm like, okay, you know what? I realized I don't know the best path. And so my mantra is show me the way, Mm -hmm. but not only do I have to ask, I now have to create the space to get an answer. So maybe is that in meditation or for me, it's going for a run and that's how I, but I want to share something else. Actually, again, timely, the podcast that I released yesterday, I I just want to help people because maybe some people are still sitting there going, I don't know what my thing is. So this entrepreneur, he's actually a naval officer based in Oklahoma, had a business, kind of that whole masculine energy, trying to make shit happen, blah, blah, blah. And then when he, he finally got to the point, he was frustrated and asked the question, um, you know, like, what am I supposed to do? He started paying attention to the external cues. Mm-hmm. What I mean by that is, 
do people come to you time and time again for something specific? Like, are you really good? What is your zone of genius that maybe you're not even paying attention to? So long story short, people kept coming to him on how do you create a podcast? He never planned it. He has now created a business and a course that has gotten picked up by multiple college universities. And it is currently the only um, for credit college class on podcasting. And again, he couldn't have created that, but people kept coming to him asking. Mm -hmm. So have you experienced that as well? That whole, okay, pay attention to external cues. What do people ask me for? Oh, absolutely. I think it's paying attention to the external cues on what are people asking for? And also what are you seeing and hearing? Mm -hmm. Right? So there's like this power of three. So if you hear something three times, it, you must go investigate it, right? Like if you hear like this example, if you hear in this example, at least three times, you need to create a podcast while you'd be great at, great at creating a podcast. Wow. You have an amazing voice. You need to be on a podcast. He's heard it three. He's had three different confirmations. Yeah. He's got to go explore that now. Right. And I see it time and time again with my clients, um, to where I can see so clearly, I can see so clearly what they're meant to do and they aren't there yet. They keep kind of like circling and circling and like trying to land the plane on something yeah. and they like, they get close to it, but they get scared. So they have to like come over to something else and then they come back to it. And then they, it's like this game that they play. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not up to me to tell my clients like, this is the thing that you need to do, go do it. But it's up to me to be their guide in, hmm, interesting that this is coming up again. Did you realize that we talked about this in the session last time? You know, like those kinds of things. It's, yeah. it's, those, it's those confirmations. And the other thing I will say too, and I know we talked about this, um, is the synchronicities, right? Like the, the synchronicities that the universe will give you on, you're on the right path. And, and the way that those show up for me most often is in numbers like 1111, 222, 333. When you look at the clock, you start to see those numbers lining up quite a bit. Um, and I've opened a number of people's eyes to that. Even, even when you go to, you know, the coffee shop and your total is 888, like that's another divine sign that you're on the right path. I love that. And on that note, we all, I also believe that we all have kind of our own symbol. However, we're going to resonate universe, uni, God, spirit is going to talk to us. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. for me in different times of my life, it's been different things, but my for sure go-to always is butterflies. When I see a butterfly flying, if I see, I see them all the time on cars. I'm like, how many people have freaking butterfly bumper stickers yeah. on people's clothing? But also you're right. Numbers is a big one. However, I've also seen like all of a sudden I'll look up at a billboard. I'm like, was that written for me? Or I've heard a song over and over again. And, but today it stuck out in that mm -hmm. line. So mm -hmm. it's that whole paying attention because the cues are there. Oh, they're absolutely there. Absolutely. Yeah. There was one time, um, before, before I left my sales job, um, I was driving like two hours North. And that day I was like, I'm going to write down every billboard that I see. And I did. And I wrote down like everyone that I just happened to look up at, right? Like I didn't like seek them out, but I was like, every time I happen to look up, I'm going to write this down. And every single message was like, be inspired. You can do this. You're on the right path, like become better. You know, like it was all these, you know, higher signs. And I was just like, how amazing is that? So for those of you that are listening, um, I, you know, I, I feel called to, you know, challenge you in that, like start to just, you know, don't overthink it, but start to pay attention. I mean, it can be like, you know, like Heather and I are talking, maybe you're starting to notice the clock numbers lining up. That was the one that very first started for me. I was like, why am I seeing 11, 11 all the time? Like, what is that? I didn't even know what it was about. Um, I didn't know it was a synchronicity, I, but I was like, I keep seeing 11, 11. And then I finally, you know, asked the Googles, what is that? Um, or, or the butterflies or, 
you know, the billboards, um, you know, I, I challenge anybody that's, you know, driving and listening in the car, like take stock to what you see on a billboard or on a bumper or on a, on a bumper sticker. And also the license plate game, like what kind of license plates are you seeing? Well, and something I would love to share, and, and I want to hear your input is mm -hmm. I think most of humanity takes life too serious, especially if you're listening to the news, you're inundated with fear and negativity and violence and the world is going to shit. However, depending on what you're taking in is going to be your experience. And so I, I'm realizing and just have this internal knowing that, and I love that Disney movies are also another great one for me in messages, mm -hmm. but Disney's newest movie, Soul, mm -hmm. it's a good our one. only purpose is to experience joy and chase our spark. And I think that's what we've kind of gotten to is that whole, what was your spark? Mine was teaching and, you know, what is your spark and what, what lights you up? And I guess my question for you is for somebody sitting there, they have that internal nudge and that knowing they're, they're meant to be doing something else. Mm -hmm. How do you step into being bold and courageous to shine your light? Oh, that's, like, that's, such a, that's such a great question. And I feel like it's such a heavy question, yeah. but an easy one at the same time. And, and my answer to that would be to get quiet. Mm -hmm. And to like, to get quiet and just allow the answers to come, just allow the answers to come. Yeah. And I think that I could sum that up the best in saying, please show me the way and then surrender and allow it to unfold. I love that. And I think for some people silencing for sure. Meditation is a great space for me. It's that moving meditation of running mm -hmm. for others. It's the open journaling and literally it can come to you and through you through the pen and paper. So there's not one right way to do this, but you've got to, there's absolutely not one right or wrong way. Yeah. I believe I'm, you have to have the desire and then you're right to ask and then create the space to allow. And mm -hmm. I love that. even like, um, you know, it's funny even, you know, for me, it's, it's walking outside and nature. Um, another place where I get a lot of downloads is, um, like when I'm in the shower in the morning, like I just, my mind just goes and I get like so many good things that I actually have, uh, window markers in the bathroom so that when I get out of the shower, I can capture my ideas on the mirrors before they go. Um, because once I get into the rest of the day, then I like forget what I was thinking about. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it's just anything. I mean, it can be, you know, bike riding or, you know, anything that just allows you to just forget all the pressures of like every, like, what we foresee to be everyday life. I think that's really important. And I think you also hit on this earlier and I, I made a note, but, um, you know, Tony Robbins says this all the time, but where your focus goes, your energy flows, right? So if you're watching the news and you're so focused on all of, you know, what's happening there, that's where your energy is going to go too. So, um, you know, just be aware of that. I want to ask you, what are some of your daily disciplines? Oh, great question. Um, daily disciplines every morning, um, wake up around five 30. I have to meditate and then journal. And then I work out with my husband every morning, just like key integral, like move your body. Um, and then what else do I do every month? Oh, and water. Sorry. I'm like, what are my five things? So it's, um, water. That's actually very first thing. Meditate, journal movement. And I, I do also, um, say a prayer of thanks. Like, thank you for this day. Thank you for waking up today. Um, yeah. You know, thank you for my healthy body, my healthy family, those kinds of things. So wait a minute. It's not looking at your phone, scrolling, checking email, already getting like hijacking your day with other people's stuff. No, that's like, <laughs> well, and please, I think that's important. Please no. Like if you're yeah. doing that, please just like wait. If that's the first, if you roll over and you pick up your phone right away, 
just please at least like count to 10 before you do it. I mean, I'm not asking you to put the phone away for the entire morning, but please just try to baby step your way into like away from that, not into that, but away from it because well, only, you're, yeah. go ahead. I was just going to say the only reason I brought that up is that it comes down to being a, intentional with your day, with your time, with your energy, with your thoughts, mm-hmm. with whatever. But I love that. And most people preach about a morning routine, but the reason is, it's because like, I believe you have to fill up your own cup. So take care of, of mind, body, spirit in the morning. And then you you set yourself up day to take care of others. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can't pour from an empty cup, an empty cup, right? Yes. Well then question for you, what is a key takeaway you want listeners to get from this conversation? I think the biggest takeaway from our conversation, Heather, is that if you have something on your heart that you feel like you are the, like you are called to be doing something more is to, like we said before, ask for what that thing is, ask for the clarity and surrender and allow it to come to you because the world needs you. The world needs you. The world needs the gifts that you have and the world right now, now more than ever, we need, we need everyone (laughs) on this planet, in this world, everyone that's listening to this podcast, we need you now more than ever to step up and shine your light and share your gift with all of us. Now more than ever, we need you, no matter what that looks like. Preach. I love that. (laughs) You're right though. I have a couple rapid fire questions to ask you to wrap up the interview. Yeah. What is a quote or motto that you live by? Surrender and allow. Mm. That's easy. Mm -hmm. I think some people, you know, try to make life too complicated, but you know what? I I, I used to, and I used to, I used to overcomplicate it. And I have a very good friend and she was like, surrender and allow Mm. surrender. And and I just was like, what? I could like, she had to say it to me like a lot. And then I finally got it and everything started unlocking. But I'm a type A control freak. You want me to surrender and allow? Yeah, I do. (laughs) <laughs> and so you went from maybe doing that to living in flow and ease. Is that Absolutely. Fair? Yep. 100%. What is a book you're currently reading or highly recommend? A uh, book I'm currently reading and or highly recommend is The Magic of Belief. And I don't know who wrote it. Okay. That's okay. You know, what's another really good one though, is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Yeah. One of of the all time greats. Yeah. Like when in doubt, pull that one out. (laughs) Final question. What advice would you give your younger self? Oh, what advice would I give my younger self? Um, Your life is going to turn out totally different than you expected, but in the most beautiful way. So just keep going. I love that. And what a great note to end on. Sarah, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Heather. It's a pleasure. Mm -hmm.